Yeah, sure. Really excited to pick uh, Tommy Torgiai here from The Ohio State University. Um, really excited to add him to our D-line room at a position of need for us. Tommy's a, you know, what we consider a very good run player who's kind of come into his own here in the last year. I'm excited to add an Ohio State guy who we think will be a great fit as a person for the organization and a great fit in the room and, um, you know, really helps upgrade our, our defensive line room going into, um, into the season. So with that, happy to open it up for any questions. Thank you very much, Dan. The first one will come from Jake Trotter. Yeah, hey, Dan. Uh, yeah, how do you feel about your uh, defensive tackle rotation now, and, and how does Tommy fit into that? Yeah, I mean, we're excited. Be, I mean, between, you know, adding Tommy, um, you know, with Billings, Jordan Elliott, uh, Malik, Sheldon Day, who we have on the roster as well, and had on the practice squad at the end of last year. Like, we feel pretty good about the room going in. Um, you know, again, Tommy's skill set, we're excited to add. We think he's a very good run player. Um, obviously, in a division that you know is a, is a physical division in general, and um, you know we think there's upside there as a pass rusher for him as well. Um, he's a good, powerful, explosive, and quick guy to add to the room. So again, you know you can never have enough defensive linemen, and, and we're excited to get him in the mix, see what he can do, and compete with the rest of the crew here. Thanks, Jake. Nate Ulrich, you're next. Hey, obviously, um, you know, the Sheldon Richardson release was was big news um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, not that you would expect a rookie to come in and fill the shoes right away, but uh, was this all part of a strategy to kind of go young uh, with a D tackle you really liked? And did it kind of play out exactly the way you guys wanted it? Sure, yeah. I mean, it was definitely a position that we were interested in going into the draft. Um, you know, it's at certain picks, you know, we're, we're very excited with the guys that we added the first two days here. Um, and really, you know, at this point, you kind of let let the board fall as it may and and try to pick the best players that we think can be, you know, good fits um, on either side of the ball, um, regardless of position. So, you know, when Tommy was there, um, you know, it felt like a pretty easy pick for us. Sheldon's obviously, you know, a great player and a great teammate and, um, you know, to add another guy to the mix that we think can compete. Um, and hopefully add some, you know, production that he gave us the last couple of years and something we're pretty excited about here with this pick. So looking forward to getting him in the building. Thank you, Nate. Jeff Shadell, you're up. Thanks for doing this. It's kind of interesting you say he's a good run defender. The uh, big shots here on uh, ESPN are saying just the opposite, that he could get to the quarterback but he isn't a good run defender. So why are they wrong? So I would say Tommy's quick off the ball. That's what makes Tommy like for us is a really good scheme fit because, you know, he may be slightly undersized. I don't know why they would say he's not a good run player, um, but he is, a he, you know, we look for penetrating guys up front. We think he can do that, which is disruptive in the run game. It's a trait that we look for. And then, you know, um, again, he did come into his own this year with, you know, showing some power and some quickness coming off the ball. Um, and again, like when you kind of pair him with the rest of the guys that we have in our defensive line group, um, we're always looking for quick, you know, quick, twitchy, explosive guys. And we think he fits that bill. So um, really looking forward to, to seeing what he can do on both sides of the ball. So, Thanks, Jeff. Tony Grossi has our next question. Hey, Dan, I'm wondering uh, at this time of the draft, does Andrew just delegate guys to, to inquire about rolling picks into next year? How does that happen this late in the draft? Sure. I mean, you know, we, we always look, I would say it's something we, you know, get multiple calls on to go forward and back really with each pick in the draft. It's part of our process here. We're always reaching out to teams and teams are always, you know, reaching out to us as well um, to move back and forward, to move picks into future years is always something we're interested in. Um, you know, so, but it's also comes to the point where you're excited to take a player that, you know, that, that you really like that's sitting there. And, um, you know, we're able to, you know, move one pick for next year and add, add a pick that we are excited about for next year and still, you know, have a couple of picks left to add some players that we like um, in this draft class as well. Also, is developmental quarterback in the conversation at all? Um, I mean, it really just kind of depends who's, who's left on the board here. Um, you know, we really do like our quarterback room. You know, we obviously have, um, you know, three guys in the room right now that, that we're excited about. And again, um, it really just comes down to who who is available at this point. So 
um, there's a few left in the discussion and, and we'll kind of see where it goes from there for the next few picks here. Thank you, Tony. Marla Reidenauer, go ahead. Uh, yeah, considering you only started one year, Tommy, you know, might be a little bit of a developmental guy, but what do you see about him and his personality or the way he learns? It shows you that he's capable of, I mean, maybe his best football is still ahead. Sure. I mean, Tommy, you know, Ohio State's had a lot of really good defensive linemen come out here the last couple of years that, you know, all of them are in the league and he's sat and learned from, you know, a lot of the guys ahead of him. Um, you know, got a chance to see him work live at the pro day. I think he's he's a guy that is about his work um, as we try to be about here. Um, Coach Stefanski hits on it all the time. And I think Tommy um, exemplifies that. He's, you know, very well respected in their program. Um, you know, he is a, a very hard worker and again, it's, it's the tools that fit our system. We think he's a strong, disruptive player uh, with high upside. And I think he really he showed that this year and kind of turned it on, you know, particularly the last couple of games of the year we thought were really impressive. And again, looking forward to getting him in the boat and letting him compete with the guys we have in the room. I know you guys have Denzel, but you haven't had a ton of Buckeyes. Is this a, does this signify anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's a couple pretty good ones this year. I mean, you know, a lot of them are off the board already. Um, you know, that's that's a heck of a program. Um, those guys are always great to us every time we go down there. And I think, you know, it's it's a very good good thing that I got going there. And I'm sure we will be looking at plenty again next year. So, but again, you know, we are uh, happy to add another Buckeye to the group here. And again, a guy that, um, you know, we think has really good upside for us. Thanks, Marlo. We'll go to Dan Lobby. Hey, Dan. Um, when, when you're putting together that that defensive tackle group, do you feel like you need to have like four guys that can be on the field at any time to kind of rotate through during a game? Um, I would say, again, D-line is a position where the more guys you can keep fresh and, and get the most out of them. Like you kind of build your pass rush in waves, you build your sub packages and your base packages in waves if you can, you know, provided you have enough depth. Um, so again, that's something we've obviously tried to emphasize here. Um, through this offseason and, you know, adding a guy like Tommy, who we do think, um, you know, I would disagree. And I do think he, we do think he is a good run player um, with, you know, again, disruptive traits in the pass game as well. Um, it's something that, you know, really um, should have three down value for us. And again, pairs well with the rest of the guys in that room when you start to figure out, you know, who, how you want to game plan each week and where you want to put different guys on the line. So. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Tom Withers, you're up. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Dan, thank you. Uh, you've already got a, a guy that ran a 40 and 426 in the building, and now you've got a guy that did 40 reps at 225. Do those measurables really mean something when you see a guy do something like that that's uh, pretty extraordinary? It's funny, you know, when, when we researched Tommy, I mean, everybody tells you down there how strong he is and, and how awesome he is in the weight room, and it was something that, um, again, I was there live to see it. It was impressive to watch, and it's um, if anything, like the, the bench is something you're, you're fired up to see guys compete and, you know, really like you watch kind of how the rest of the guys around that player that, you know, is about to light it up, react. And, you know, those guys were all into it. It was really fun to watch um, that, you know, they had all their future year players around. So it was cool to see. And anytime somebody, you know, blows a test out of the water, whether it's a 40, um, the bench, anything like that, it's always, it, it is always fun to see. But again, you know, we're really looking to see how guys compete and how they interact with everybody over the course of their pro day from drill. For this, so. Thanks, Dan. And for the second year in a row, it's you guys are taking big program guys. Is that by design or is it just the, the quality of competition that separates them because of that? Yeah, I mean, I would, you know, there, there's a, there was a few small school players that went earlier that we, we view as really good players as well. Um, again, it kind of comes down to how the board lays out, um, you know, what our trade up and down offers may or may not be given, given where we're picking in the draft and really who's available. So. Um, you know, anytime you, again, Ohio State's such a great program to me. Anytime you add a guy out of there, you know, you know, you feel pretty strongly about what you're getting. And, you know, again, Tommy's a player that um, earned, you know, earned his role on the, on the field there this year. And then, you know, we think fits our division and fits our room nicely. So fire it up to Adam. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Tom. We'll take two more. Doug Lay, Maurice, Nate Oler. Doug? Yeah, thanks for the time. I'm, I'm just wondering big picture. Andrew Barry and this front office, how would you evaluate the ability of you guys to sort of have a plan going into a draft like this and then try to execute it? I know nothing goes perfectly and you have to be prepared, but 
in general, how, how are you guys are setting it out and then following it? Sure. I mean, you know, we do try to lay out certain parameters and, and again, it really comes down to, to doing the work with, you know, with trade calls forward and backward in the draft. You know, we all have players that we certainly have targeted and we're really excited to pull the trigger and add to our roster if they're available at the right price and um, at the right time for us. So, and again, you know, there's, the draft is always full of surprises, particularly as you get into these, you know, really like day three picks. Um, and, you know, when it comes to moving back and moving forward with picks, you know, pushing picks forward is something we're always interested in um, if we can do it. But it also comes, you know, there's plenty of points in the draft where you're really excited to, to add a specific player. Um, and again, in this case, you know, really fired up to add Tommy to the group. So, um, you know, I think we do our best to plan and then you just kind of roll with the punches as the draft goes on and do your due diligence with all your calls. And, and what's Andrew like operating during a draft? Just what's it, how, how's he like leading that room? Uh, you guys know Andrew pretty well. Andrew is as, as straightforward and as sharp a, a person as you're gonna get. He's a great communicator. Um, and again, like I, I feel like we all work really well together and we kind of have a good, good system going, um, you know, in terms of all the communication that needs to go on on draft day, because there is a lot going on at certain points. And, um, you know, I mean, like I said, you guys know Andrew, you know how, how sharp and organized he is. And, um, you know, I think we all do a pretty good job communicating throughout the entire process here. And our last one goes to Nate Ort. Hey, Dan, I had kind of a, a big picture, uh, you know, review question for you as well. Um, you know, if Wednesday or Thursday before this whole thing started, if somebody had told you you guys would be able to get uh, Newsom and, and Cora Moa, both those guys, um, what would you have said? Was it, did it seem like a realistic possibility heading in? I would have had a pretty big smile on my face like I do now. I mean, we're, we're really excited to have those guys. Um, really all of our picks so far, I mean, we're, we're really excited. These are all guys that we've, you know, obviously um, had targeted at certain points. And, you know, to be able to get those two guys you mentioned um, with the first two picks, you know, is exciting um, for our defensive unit. And, you know, we'll continue to add, you know, hopefully a couple more good players on both sides of the ball here the rest of the day. Everybody's been kind of asking about um, Joe Woods' uh, demeanor <laughs> the last couple of days. Hey, have you had any interactions, any good stories about what Joe's been like in the office? I have. Joe's been fired up. I've seen him making the rounds. And, you know, there's a couple, you know, I, I've had my door shut for half this, but I've gotten a couple pounds on the door and, you know, he's excited. And my office is right next to Coach Prefer. So I think he's excited about some of these guys, too, that are uh, certainly going to contribute for him, too, um, as we build this thing for next year. So we're excited and really just looking forward to getting everybody in the building together and getting to work together again.